Last year, Sony launched a flagship Atmos capable soundbar in the form of HTA7000. This year, Sony has lined up the HTA5000 and the HTA3000 as lower cost variants to capture a larger swath of the market, appealing for those with smaller spaces and a lower budget. Specifically, today I'm going to zoom in on the A5000, which I have right here in front of you. Now, I previously reviewed the A3000, and while it was an Atmos-capable soundbar, it used Atmos virtualization to achieve overhead sound effects present in Atmos soundtracks. It does not actually have upward-firing speakers. The surround soundstage and vertical height channel was convincing enough to pass off, but I could not help but wonder about how dedicated upward firing speakers could add to the soundbar. And this is exactly where the A5000 comes in. From the naming nomenclature, you can already tell that this is the middle of road soundbar in the HTA series lineup of Sony Atmos soundbars. The A7000 is still a current model and the A3000 is a watered down version. Now, just looking at the sizes of the soundbars and the inclusion of two upward firing speakers, the A5000 actually sits a lot closer to the A7000 than to the A3000. So with time, technology will always trickle down from the flagship offerings to the more budget-friendly options. This is exactly what's happening right here. The Sony A7000 was an eye-watering $1,300 US dollars. And for those of you in Singapore, it translates to about $2,500 Singapore dollars. Although you are able to get it for about $2,200 Singapore dollars, on the street. The A5000 comes very close to the A7000, which I will discuss about the minor differences in just a little bit. Now, the A5000 has an SRP of $1,000, US but you'll probably find it everywhere at about $800 US. In Singapore, the suggested retail price is $1,800, but right now, at this moment, you will be able to get it at $1,500, $1,005 Singapore dollars. Now, in general, I don't really like to discuss prices much because discounts and retailers usually vary this to a point that it becomes inaccurate when I immortalize it in a video like this. Suffice to say that it is a huge savings of from the A7000 while coming very close in terms of feature set and performance. Now, the A5000 comes powered with nine speakers. There are two beam tweeters right here for throwing out a wide horizontal soundscape. Now, this is coupled with three front firing speakers for the left, center, and the right channels. Now, there are also two built-in subwoofers. While they are hardly the large diaphragm ones that will put out a large, copious amount of bass, they actually do very well to give the impression of some decent amount of bass. Now, the key feature here is actually the last two speakers, which are placed on top of the A5000 for real Atmos height effects and they are top firing speakers. Now, let's compare the A5000 up and down. Now, the A7000 has almost the exact same configuration of drivers for the beam tweeters, the subwoofer, as well as the upward firing speakers, except that it has two more drivers firing for the left and the right channel for a total of 11 drivers. Now, the processing is also a little bit more advanced in that it will process 7.1.2 rather than just the 5.1.2 on the A5000. Now, when you compare downwards to the A3000, it has the additional beam tweeters as well as the upward firing speakers, which means it has four more speakers than the five speakers that is on the A3000. Now, the A3000 processes only 3.1 surround sound. Now, this would definitely mean that the A5000 does a much more convincing job of creating a wider and a taller soundstage. In terms of where it stands sonically, the A5000 is actually very close to the A7000. And if you ask me, missing out on the two extra front firing speakers on the 7000 is a compromise that is pretty easy to make. For the price difference, you're not going to miss the extra two speakers. The A5000 is definitely going to eat into the sales of the A7000 with it coming so close in terms of 
offering. The only other difference lies around the back of the soundbar. Now, the A5000 has a HDMI input port and the A7000 has two HDMI input ports. Now, this is a matter of convenience because if you are using ARC or eARC port connections to your TV, you could technically connect the devices to the TV and have them play the sound through the soundbar via the ARC or the EARC connection. But if your TV is older and it doesn't support the full EARC bandwidth, such a direct connection could give you full lossless Dolby Atmos sound quality from your external devices without relying on your TV for the processing and the eARC port for connection. So with the main difference being the extra HDMI input port and the extra pair of left and right speakers, the A5000 is actually very close to the A7000 in terms of features and performance as well as size. Now you can see I'm having a little bit of difficulties trying to maneuver this huge long soundbar within this small space here. The A5000 is actually 121 centimeters long, which is just about four feet. Now, this is by no means a small sound bar. In fact, at four feet, this is about as long as most sound bars go, even if this is positioned as a mid tier product in a Sony HTA lineup of sound bars. The A7000 is actually about three to four inches longer than even this sound bar. And Definitely a lot taller by quite a margin and make no mistake, the A5000 is actually a lot of samba for the money. Now, I started this video with a comparison simply because I think it's a middle of the road model and I figured that maybe quite a few people are watching and wondering if they should be going for this model instead of the A7000 or you might actually be wondering how much more are you going to get it if you get the A5000 over the A3000 and is it worth your money? My simple recommendation is go for the A5000 if the couple of extra hundred bucks can be absorbed within your budget. And I'm not just saying this because extra money means it's better. In fact, to prove my point, I'm also recommending this over the A7000 because the couple of extra hundred dollars on the A7000 is not going to get you a whole lot more over the A5000. Now that said, let me go into a little bit more details when it comes to the A5000 so that you know what you're getting if you have already decided that this is the model for you. Now on my channel, I don't like to go into every single detail that you can read for yourself. I think reading is faster than watching a video, especially long videos like mine. I like to highlight the features that matters to me and makes a difference to you because it makes a difference to me and that it will benefit you after you part with your hard-earned cash. Now, the first feature that I have to talk about is the 3D sound. This soundbar supports Atmos and DTSX. The support for both formats is actually not common. You'll hear a lot of soundbars supporting Atmos, but not many will support DTSX. Soundbars like the Sonos Arc will support Atmos, but only unofficially support DTS. It doesn't even support DTSX, which is the 3D sound variant. And if you're into Blu-rays and gaming consoles, this will actually be an important feature for you. The A5000 also comes with automatic room correction, which is called sound field optimization optimization by Sony. Now the process is a very simple 30 seconds process which doesn't involve you moving around the room and it doesn't depend on your phone to do it, right? So it doesn't matter whether you're on Android or iOS. You simply activate the process and it will play a series of tones and use the internal mics to map out the sound reflected off in your room and automatically calibrate the sound output in accordance to the layout of your room and where your soundbar and your surround speakers with your optional, um, and as well as the subwoofer where they are placed. Now, room correction is an important feature. Sometimes we hear a sound demo in a showroom where everything is positioned carefully and it sounds great, but when you bring home a piece of audio gear, it then starts to sound completely different. That's because sound waves are affected by your room shape and size and finishing, as well as your speaker and soundbar placement. Now with room correction, it starts to account for all of those uh, factors and will present itself with the best possible sound for your room. Now, two more features that are important impacts the sound, that is the vertical surround engine and the S-Force Pro front surround. 
Now, together, they worked to produce a soundstage that is both wide and tall. In the Sony demo, after you perform sound field optimization to correct for your room, the resulting soundstage is actually quite impressive. Now, in fact, if you're going to be watching World Cup with this soundbar, you might find yourself truly immersed as though you were really there in the stadium watching the game in football or soccer, depending on where you are. You will inevitably hear the roar of the stadium full of spectators, right? You will hear the excitement of the commentators as well. Now, when replicated poorly, the din, the noise from the spectators will sound like noise trying to cover the commentary and the commentators will sound like someone who's trying to shout into your ears and competing with the volume of the stadium roar. Everything seems to be coming to you all at once from the same singular point source. Now, and each of them will be fighting for your attention, one trying to cover the other. Now, with optional surround speakers, Sony actually executes this very well. And when executed well, the spectator roar should envelop you, creating a soundstage that is wide and tall and basically surrounds you. Now, it's like when you are at a stadium watching the game live, the atmosphere is recreated for you, covering you like a warm blanket. The live commentary should stand out and it will be layered to you, creating a voice that is concise and gives you the information about the match that you need. The voice should come to you from the front, not muddled up and mixed in with the spectator roar. And that is exactly what 360 spatial sound mapping does for you with the optional rear speakers. Now, it separates every audio component out into layers, both vertically and horizontally. So even if you are watching a soccer match which has not been coded in Atmos or DTS X 3D surround sound formats, the Sony A5000 truly stands out even with ordinary stereo sources. So the Sony HDA series soundbars actually adopt a modular approach when it comes to pairing surrounds and subwoofers. They don't come matched in your soundbar purchase. You are able to buy just the soundbar itself without committing to the surrounds and the subwoofers. Now, Sony has two options when it comes to the surround. The first is the SARS-3S. They are the lower tier options and they are pretty small and light. I don't have it with me here for, to show you the direct comparison, but they are running off direct AC power. They will open up your surround channels by running the surround channels of actual speakers to the sides or to the rear of the room. Now, the other option that I have right here is the SARS-5. Now, these are much bigger and they actually house upward firing speakers. Now imagine this, you're already getting two upward firing speakers on the A5000 soundbar itself and now you get another two more upward firing speakers on the RS5 surround speakers and we place them to the rear, they're going to be firing up the heights channels from the rear. So this will truly give you upward firing Atmos or DTS-X from both the front as well as the back. And you're going to get a seriously convincing 3D soundstage. So the RS5 also comes with built-in batteries, which means to say you don't have to permanently deploy them and run the power cables. I have the RS5 here with me. They are not plugged in, right? And you can still, you see, turn them on because they can be battery powered. So all you need to do is to charge them up with the included adapter and they will last for up to 10 hours, easily three, four, five matches even. Now you can move them into place as and when you need to. Just note that you should place them in the same location and point them in the same direction as when you do your sound field optimization to correct for your room. Now, while the A5000 soundbar claims to have a subwoofer built in, I like to manage your expectation a little bit. They won't deliver the same kind of punch that you expect from a dedicated large size subwoofer. You simply cannot defy the laws of physics because the subwoofers are, you know, squeezed within the soundbar itself. Now, bass frequencies are long sound waves and they require a lot of power and a large area speaker code to produce them with enough power and volume to get a good sensing of bass. But if you're not doing a direct head-to-head -head comparison with and without a subwoofer, you might actually be pleasantly surprised by the amount of bass that the A5000 can actually put out on its own. This is about the most amount of bass I've actually experienced from a soundbar and I think I, I do know soundbars. And I had a brief experience with the Sennheiser Ambio when it was launched. 
it really defied the logic of a soundbar, but that was such a tall soundbar. You might as well be lying bookshelf speakers on its side. Now, the A5000 really did surprise me with the amount of bass that was generated on its own within this slim chassis. Now, you might actually just get away without having to add a dedicated subwoofer to the soundbar, depending on your expectation. However, because of the modular nature of the HTA CV soundbars, you are also able to choose from two subwoofers which are compatible with the A5000. Now, I've previously tested the smaller A3000 soundbar with the larger SASW5 subwoofer, but I found them to be a little bit unevenly matched. So the A5000 soundbar is a lot more powerful and the SW5, which is this large subwoofer right here, is actually a far better match. The combination presented itself very well, augmenting the bass frequency rather smoothly. Now the SW5 is Oh, it's large, and if space is constrained, you can opt for the smaller SW3, which is a 200 watt subwoofer, and it's also wireless. Now, the SW3 is a ported subwoofer with the port facing forward, whereas the SW5 active downward firing speaker cones is matched with a passive radiator that is facing forward. Now, I really like this modular approach that Sony is taking, allowing you to choose the right size and capabilities according to your budget. But this will also mean that if you do decide to upgrade the soundbar in the future, you can still keep your surrounds and your subwoofers to migrate over to another soundbar, maybe the A7000. Now, in fact, Sony even takes this concept one step further. Now, there's a port at the rear of the soundbar that allows you to connect a compatible Sony Bravia TV that will take the center channel output from the soundbar and play it through the TV's screen speakers. This enhances the dialogue and makes it sound like the dialogue is actually coming out through the actor's mouth on the screen. Now, it is a smart move and it truly takes modular and interconnectivity to a whole new level. Now, thanks for watching this video and if you're keen, I'll be doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the A5000 and the little brother A3000 somewhere in the future. Now, I'll be doing a binaural voice recording of both soundbars so they can hear the difference for yourself. So, if you're not yet already subscribed to this channel, please do so and ring the notification bell so that you will be notified when that video launches. For those of you who are interested to learn more about the Sony HTA 3000, do remember to check out this video that I have previously made and I will see you over in that video.